Hey there, I'm Mark Chestnut here for LatinFlyer.com. I just arrived last night at the city of Cartagena on Colombia's Caribbean coast. I have to admit, I didn't know exactly what to expect on my first visit, but what I found is a city with a beautiful historic heart filled with stunning architecture, rich culture, and lots to see and do. Founded in 1533 as a strategic colonial port for the Spanish Empire, the city of Cartagena de Indias, usually just called Cartagena, was so wealthy that pirates started making attacks. The government responded by erecting a series of walls and fortifications around the city. And today, that original walled city is the white-hot center of tourism, and by most counts, the biggest foreign tourist destination in all of Colombia. Warm Caribbean breezes enveloped the narrow streets of the historic center, which was declared a UNESCO World Heritage Site in 1984. Architecture runs the gamut from Andalusian to Victorian, Belle Epoque, and Greek Revival. The historic center is very pedestrian friendly, and you can still enter beneath the original clock tower, which was once the main entrance to the city. There's a photo opportunity at every turn here, and you never know when a visit to attractive city squares like Plaza Bolivar might give you the opportunity to watch live music and dance. Indeed, this is a city with a very creative tradition, from music and dance to silent street performers, colorfully clad street vendors, and public art. It's also filled with interesting attractions, like the Gold Museum, which exhibits gold artistry of the Zenyu culture from as far back as the 2nd century BC. At the San Pedro Claver Monastery and Church, you can explore the living quarters and church of a Spanish nobleman and priest who dedicated his life to helping the plight of slaves. At the Museum of the Inquisition, you can check out some rather dramatic torture devices. Or for something calmer, catch a live performance at the Heredia Theater, which opened in 1911. This is one of the main venues for Cartagena's annual International Music Festival, which attracts musicians from around the world. Just outside of the historic center are two interesting sites. La Popa, a hill that is the highest point in the city, is home to the 17th century Santa Cruz Monastery. It's a good place to get a nearly bird's eye view of the city. Also impressive is San Felipe Fort, a massive structure built in the 17th century. You can even explore some of the fort's intricate tunnel system. The fort has a very interesting tunnel system. It is really narrow and short. We always recommend to the gentleman, to the gentlemen, to hold the ladies' hands because sometimes when we visit this tunnel, when we get at the other side, so that the women are missing. So the women are missing. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. I think I'll wait outside. We're going to talk here. Maybe it's the fault of the gentleman. But not to worry. Before you know it, you'll be back outside and enjoying the magnificent view. For all its historic landmarks, Cartagena is not living in the past. It also has modern beachfront areas lined with sleek high-rise towers and resort-style hotels. Boca Grande is one of the most popular neighborhoods. And water sports, boating, and day trips to nearby islands are all popular activities. Check out the latinflyer.com video about the Rosario Islands for more information. But whatever you do, you still won't want to miss spending an evening in the historic city center. After dark, Cartagena's downtown really comes alive, with locals and visitors alike strolling the streets and popping into countless restaurants, bars, and shops, 
or perhaps just enjoying the warm evening air with live music and dance on one of the town squares. One thing is for sure, you won't be bored in Cartagena de Indias. I'm Mark Chestnut. For more information about Cartagena and to see more of the travel videos, including Cartagena dining, shopping, hotels, the Inquisition Museum, and the Rosario Islands, visit latinflyerblog.com and latinflyer.com.